good morning and welcome to my reading vlog for the 10th round of the Queer Lit Readathon. I am not in my normal location and I don't have all of my books, but that's okay because I'm going home tomorrow. If you saw my weekly wrap up from last week, you know that I'm visiting friends and family and having a great weekend, but it was a very spur of the moment. They surprised us by showing up from the UK for the first time in three years type of thing. So all of my books are at home, but I have at least three, I think maybe four of them digitally on my phone. So that's going to tide me over until I get home and I can touch all of my books and read them. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. I have not read 10 books in a week in a very long time, so let's see what we can do about that. However, first I need to do some editing, I need to visit with some friends, and then I need to find a time to just cloister myself in here and read when nobody knows that I'm missing. So once I figure out which book I'm picking up first, I will update you. Hello, I finally did my weekly wrap up and now I finally have time to read, although the house is full of people going in and out all day, which I absolutely love. So I feel bad about sequestering myself to read, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've decided to start with Lavender House by Lev A.C. Rosen. This is a historical fiction. I'm really looking forward to it. I think I'm really going to love it. So I just need to tuck in and see how much I can get done before I have to go do social things. I've read about half of Lavender House. I'm really enjoying it. However, we're having a very early Christmas party because of the people that are here and there's like 15 people out there and I'm gonna go hang out with them. This is maybe the first time I'm not gonna complete my TBR, but we'll find out because we're leaving tomorrow so I probably can do it, but also this has been a slow reading year for me, so who knows. Hello, it's Monday, we're home. I've read, I think, 90% of my book so far. By that one, I obviously mean Lavender House, and I'm really enjoying it. I think we've been told who done it, but I have a sneaking suspicion there's gonna be like a last minute switch up, so who knows, um, but I'm gonna finish it. Also today, I started listening to Pumpkin. It is absolutely delightful so far. It's been a while since I read the other books in the series um, because it's a very loose companion series, but I did remember that I'm pretty sure Clementine's girlfriend we've met before in previous books, so that's wonderful, and I think I'm going to really enjoy this. It's also going to go by so fast, but first I will really want to finish Lavender House before I move on to something else to read physically. Good morning, it's Tuesday. Last night I finished Lavender House and I very much enjoyed it. I actually had to look up to see if it was the first in the series because I could definitely see a spinoff eventually happening. It's not listed as the first in the series, but if a spinoff ever happened, I would read it. I very much enjoyed how everybody came together, how the whodunit aspect of this came together. I very much enjoyed seeing this slice of life in 1950s outside of San Francisco. It was just really good. Before I completely pass out because I needed it. I slept very well last night. I also started reading Rough Paradise. This one is a novella and it's written in a style where it's kind of like this person writing about their life kind of in a journal but it's not dated in any way so it's not linear which is a little bit hard to follow but other than that I'm enjoying seeing into this person's life. This character is intersex. His parents think that he is supposed to be a girl. He knows that he is a boy and the home life seems generally terrible but he's met this girl that he really really likes and I think she likes him too so it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses. Also my hold for the audiobook version of The Insiders came in today so after I finish Pumpkin which I'm going to definitely work on today I can go right into that and then I haven't decided what else I'm going to read with my eyeballs after Rough Paradise but I'll figure that out when the time comes. Hello bathroom update because longtime viewers of my channel know it's not really one of my vlogs if I don't vlog in the bathroom at some point. It's like just a little after 11 and I'm about to go to bed, but I should update you that I both finished Pumpkin, which was just so charming and delightful and I loved it, and I started The Year Shakespeare Ruined My Life, which so far is also delightful and it was a little bit weird to have two settings in very much American high school, but obviously these are written so well that I wasn't starting to think I was reading one when I was reading the other, which is good. This means that tomorrow I'm going to start the audiobook of The Insiders, which is very exciting, and then hopefully also finish off the year of Shakespeare ruined my life before I start on something else because tomorrow is Wednesday and on Wednesday I don't wear pink because I don't wear pink but I do have a book bath. 
math and I would like to have a physical book for the photo because that's how I roll. So if I could finish off the year Shakespeare wrote my life that would be very very lovely. This one, I'm only about six chapters into this one and basically it's this girl who's been conned into being the producer of the school show which is going to be A Midsummer Night's Dream and it's basically this teacher pushed it off on her on a like we're gonna co-produce and I'm gonna teach you how to do it but she was basically just like here's the stuff see ya and it's not taught her how to do it at all which is just rude and she won't just back out of it because she wants to be valedictorian also there's this other guy that's apparently running for valedictorian but he is such a dude bro and she doesn't really understand why he's going to even be considered for this I know it has to do with GPA, but she's just like, how? I don't understand. All he does is make boob jokes. Like, I don't understand. And of course, he's going to be in the play, which is going to be a pain in the butt. Also, she also has this huge crush on this girl that's going to be playing Titania and another character. They're double casting a couple of characters because not a lot of people are actually good in this theater program, which can't relate to actually my theater experience. There were too many good people, so we ended up having to double cast things. Like, you would have the A cast, and the B cast. So yeah, I'm enjoying reliving high school things, especially because I just got back from spending a weekend where I saw a lot of people that I did theater with in my youth, including one friend who let it be known to me that because I was slightly older than her when we were doing shows together, she was always thought of me as like the cool older girl with the awesome eyebrows. And I was like, that is the best thing to learn. Thank you so much. That was on the tail end of having been in a live show and having a friend tell me that they used to watch my videos and get queer book recs before they were out of the closet and before they started their own channel. And this was a thing that I didn't know about them previously. So I almost cried on that live stream. So it's been a very nice couple of days for me when it comes to things making me want to cry because they're so nice. All that being said though, it is time for me to go to bed. Good morning. I realized last night after I had already updated you and gone to bed, was just laying there waiting to go to sleep, that I said I loved Pumpkin. I didn't think I told you anything about it. Pumpkin is about a boy named Waylon. He has a twin sister named Clementine. It is their senior year at high school, and he is really obsessed with this one show. I think it's called The Fiercest of Them All. And he wants this one particular queen to win this drag event, and she doesn't, and he's pretty sure it's because she's plus size, and he is also plus size and he's also just sick of fat people not being able to do things that they want because they're fat and people are fat phobic so he makes an audition tape off the fly doesn't even intend to send it in but does show it to his twin sister who ends up showing it to somebody else and it gets out and people around the school are really big jerks about it and then it goes from there but this was just so wonderful and obviously up my alley I love drag race so obviously I'm gonna love this I love Julie Murphy so I'm gonna love this and this is a companion novel to both Dumplin' and Puddin', so like it's characters I already know popping up in the background being all cute, and uh, obviously, yeah, I loved it. It was great. Date. I have read about 60% of the year Shakespeare ruined my life and I'm really enjoying it so far. She's going through some tough times where she just really wants to do really well and she's a perfectionist and she's really hard on herself and she keeps screwing things up because of the things that she's doing. So I really liked how a certain conversation between her and a potential love interest worked out because that was a very awkward situation. While I was making a little bit of lunch I also listened to the first few chapters of The Insiders and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's very cute. Also, Ave Roja is the narrator and I love their work from other things like Cemetery Boys and Lake Lore. So it was exciting to hear this voice and go, I think I know this voice, and then have them say their name and have me go, yes, excellent, I know this person. I mean, not personally, I know this person's work. I've listened to this person's work. In any case, Hector has gone to a new school because his mother got a new job in a different area and there's no theater department there, which is a big bummer. And he's currently sitting at the table at lunchtime for all of the misfits in the school and there's definitely this big bully that's going to be a big part of this 
because basically everybody at that table is like, yeah, don't hang out with him because he will turn on you. And then you, that's the whole reason we're all misfits because nobody likes us because he turned on us. So that's going to be a thing. And I'm looking forward to the little magical aspect of this coming up because it's my understanding that he spends a lot of time in the janitor's closet. And then there's a portal to hang out with a couple of other students at other schools somewhere else. And I'm looking forward to that. Good morning! Last night we put up the Christmas tree, so that gets to be in the background of this shot. Hopefully the lighting's okay. Last night I finished the year Shakespeare ruined my life. I ended up really enjoying it and also being super stressed out while reading it because, oh my goodness, all of the things that went wrong. I also started reading Exodus 2030. Um, I wanted to finish it, but I just couldn't keep my eyes open long enough because I was getting tired, it was getting late. So I'm gonna finish that today. I'm also really enjoying The Insiders. It's gotten cute and he's met his first random other person from a different school, so I'm really enjoying that situation. I'm getting slightly concerned that I won't be able to finish everything on my TBR in the next three days, so In Other Lands is at the end of my list because it would be my reread. And even if I don't finish it, I am going to read it. I'll just let it roll into the next week. That means I still have any other name, Sam Sylvester, and In Deeper Waters. So let's see how I can do. Thursday night update. I have myself a bowl of snacks and I am very much enjoying the many half-lived lives of Sam Sylvester. This is truly right up my alley because this year I've gone down a major true crime rabbit hole and I pretty much watch it all the time while I'm doing work, except for this week where I'm reading while I'm doing work because I don't think I'm gonna finish my TBR because of the way that my week started out, but I'm going to keep trying. And uh, I'm about a little more than a third of the way through this. I'm very much enjoying it, but I need some reading fuel to keep my eyes open because if I am too comfy and I read for too long, I start falling asleep no matter if I'm really interested or not. past midnight and I want to keep reading but I have to go to bed but I really want to know who the murderer is and I have a guess but we'll find out tomorrow because I can't finish now. concerned about my TBR. I'm almost done Sam. I haven't I haven't read anything since I updated you last night, but I'm very excited to finish that today because that's definitely happening. After that I'm going to go into In Deeper Waters because not only is that something I'm very interested in reading next, but it is a book that was on my 12 challenge, if you remember that from back at the beginning of the year, and I should really get to that. And the whole reason I haven't gotten to the last few books on my 12 challenge is I don't feel like vlogging them, but I'm already vlogging right now. So I'm just going to use that momentum of already having to vlog to actually get to that one and hope that I actually get to the other, I think, two or three that I need to finish by the end of the year. We'll see. The Insiders is also going wonderfully. I listened to a bunch of it last night when I was giving my eyes a rest from reading Sam Sylvester. And I've got about four hours of that left if I were to do it at regular speed. And obviously I'm going to read it a little bit quicker because why wouldn't I use tools like that? When I finish, not if I finish, when I finish In Deeper Waters, either late today or early tomorrow, I am going to move on to any other name. It is smaller than the other books, so I might be able to finish it as well. And then if everything else is done, I'm going to move on to In Other Lands because I'm really excited to reread it. I just don't know if I'm going to finish it before midnight on Saturday. Hello, I finished The Many half Life Lives of Sam Sylvester and I was totally right about who the murderer was, so if anybody else has read it, please let me know. Did you figure it out before it was revealed? You don't have to say who it was, but just let me know down in the comments. I'm going to take a few sips of coffee and then move on to In Deeper Waters. Hello, it's Friday night at about 6 p.m., although you wouldn't be able to tell it from the weather because it's been gray and gross all day and it feels like it's been night for ever. However, I'm more than halfway through In Deeper Waters and I'm really, really enjoying it. I didn't know much going into it besides it wasn't a pirate book, despite what the cover might tell you. A lot of it does take place on ships, but there you are. I really enjoy the family dynamics. I'm so upset with what Tal has had to go through 
and I totally knew what was going to be going on with the love interest and what the big secret there was. So that was fun when that finally came to fruition because I remember a specific line being like, oh yeah, it wouldn't be something like made up things like this and this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, he's definitely that. I'm enjoying it. I also wanted to update now because we are getting a lot of wind and there's a good chance we'll lose power at some point. And if we lose power, I am going to stop reading. I actually kind of hope we lose power so I can stop reading and not feel bad about it. I am going to finish this book. I am going to also finish The Insiders, but then I don't know if I'm going to get to my last two books because I know that it took me a solid 12 hours to read In Other Lands when I read it the first time for a previous Queerly Readathon round, and I just don't think it's gonna happen. And then any other name I think is like 200, 250 pages, so I could probably knock that out in like six hours, six to eight hours. I don't even know, I'm a slow reader. But I'm getting really tired, and with the late start to the week, I don't know if it's gonna happen tomorrow. I'll find out. I'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow, because if I feel so much not like reading, I'm just not going to bother. But if I feel like getting in that one last hurrah, I will go for it. We'll find out. Saturday and the last day of this round of the Queer Lit Readathon. I this morning woke up and went to a fitness class and went for a walk and that was lovely. I also finished The Insiders because that's what I was listening to while I was walking to and from the YMCA and that walk around the lake which was super lovely even though it started to rain and I was like it's gonna be fine it's not gonna pour and it didn't and I was so happy about it. Last night I also took a break from reading and honestly it was one of the best things I did because I was getting really stressed out about this being the first time I never finished my DBR for the Queer Lit Readathon and honestly pretty sure the only person that cares is me and I needed a break so mental health is important. That means I got caught up on RuPaul's Drag Race Canada versus the world so I watched episode three from last week and I watched this week's episode and that hit pretty hard when a certain queen decided to no longer be there for mental health reasons so that was wonderful to just see that reflected in the experience I had already been having. That means that today I'm going to finish In Deeper Waters and then I'm just going to call it quits. I'm going to be done. I am going to read my other books, but eventually I don't need to pick them up immediately. I can read them next week or the week after, or maybe in the new year, who knows? So yeah, that's my update. I probably have about a hundred pages to read today and then I'm done and that is okay. And with that, I have finished In Deeper Waters and it was lovely. I love the concept of a high fantasy fairy tale and this was just so fun. I really loved going on this adventure and seeing how it was going to play out and it was just such a lovely read. So I'm glad that this is how I'm finishing off the Queer Lit Readathon because my eyes are tired. I know I have two more books, but they can wait till next week. Thank you, as always, to everyone who joined us for the Queer Lit Readathon. If you have any vlogs or anything like that, please leave me the links down below or tell me how I can find them because I definitely want to watch them. Also, by the time this goes up, I should have announced the 2023 date, so if you didn't see that, I will link that down below. What was your favorite read of the Queer Lit Readathon? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smile face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!